Welcome to I Get It. And welcome to the session introduction. My name is Eric Banson, and today I'll be discussing about the beginner sketch creation in 3D experience. In this session, we will cover exploring sketch mode, creating the sketches, and the constraints overview. Now, before we begin the actual webinar, I'd like to take you quickly through the, our uh, myigetit.com uh, website. It's a fairly new website that we have, and I'd like to show you that we have at the top when you come here, you can browse our catalog, uh, view subscriptions with these buttons here. If you come across the top, we have the catalog up here, subscriptions, we have I Get It for Enterprise, we have blogs with business blogs and tech blogs. We have programs for campus, author, and resellers, and we even have a little bit of interest about us as well. So if you just come here without having a sign-in or anything, you can go to the catalog, and you can see here within our library, we have Autodesk, SolidWorks, Katia, 3D Experience, NX, Team Center. We have a lot of offerings for online training, even GD&T and uh, Creo. Now if you select on any of one of these, say like NX, you'll come to the course catalog and in here you'll see the most recent list of our courses. And you can look at them by selecting the view more button. And then in here you can see that you'll get a description about the course prerequisites, the target audience, and also take a look at the curriculum of that course. You can even select on it and you can see what type of topics are in which of each of these curriculum units and lessons. Now if you do have a sign in, go ahead and select sign in. You'll come to the sign in page and I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to sign in and you'll come to this main page. And here on the left you'll see a, you'll have a dashboard, you have your learning, or here you can go ahead and select the categories of the courses that you wish to learn about. You also have then that particular version or that year version of, those of that particular software. We also have assessments, we have learning paths, history, and then we go back to our catalog, which then takes us back as I showed you earlier. This is all within there. We have quick starts, we have tech tips as well that you can select on and go through and read and actually go through procedures with those. And of course, if we head back up to our dashboard, you can also see your popular roles, your continuous learning, and a learning path. And you can see the time spent as well. So with all of that, let's go ahead and let's get ready to go into the webinar and talk about 3D experience and sketching for beginners. So let's begin. Let's first start with a 3D part in order to get to the sketch mode. To do that, I'm gonna go ahead and go up to the Add button, select it, and I'm going to select 3D part. You can see now that my part is now created. When creating a sketch, you have three types to choose from. Sliding, also known as non-position, position, and isolated. The two most common types you'll create are sliding or position sketch. The sliding sketch will automatically take the same origin and orientation as the sketch support on which it is placed. Let's go ahead and begin to create a sliding sketch. So let's first go down to our position sketch tool button, select on that, and notice we get sketch positioning dialog. Here we have the support. For the type, if we select that, we have a choice of either positioned or sliding. Go ahead and select sliding. Now notice when I select the sliding, the origin and orientation and all the reverse horizontal, reverse vertical, and swap buttons and drop downs are grayed out we're only going to create a sliding sketch in this in this position. So to do so, go ahead and select the plane you wish 
to create a sliding sketch on. You have your choice of selecting here in the graphic window or up here in the specification tree, you can select the planes as well. Let's go ahead and select the YZ plane. When finished, go ahead and select OK. As you notice, you are automatically placed into sketch mode. Under the sketch section, you'll see a variety of tools and commands to create a sketch. On most of the commands, when you select over them, a box appears with an explanation and the name of that command. You also see a smaller box next to it with an arrow. Select that and notice that you have a menu of different types of commands to select from. If you run your arrow or your cursor over each of them, an informational box will appear giving the name of the command as well as a brief description. When selecting any commands, Certain commands will have a Tools Palette dialog box, and in it will have op other options to select to create that particular command. Next, let's exit out by selecting the Exit app. Now, since there was nothing created within this particular sketch, a sketch will not be created within the tree. For if something was created within the sketch, you would see the sketch created with, a num with its number underneath the part body. Next, let's go ahead and create a position sketch. A position sketch can be created by manually specifying the origin and orientation through the selection of reference geometry. The user defines where he wants the origin of the sketch to be and which direction the horizontal and vertical sketch axes point. Here we have a sketch already created with a line. Go down to your model section and select position sketch. For the planar support, select the YZ plane, either selecting it in the graphic window or in the tree. Next, for the origin, use the drop down menu and select projection point. For its reference, we're going to select the point on a line that was previously created. Notice under reference that the vertex and which sketch that that was created. And notice now that you have a horizontal and vertical axes at that position. Next, under orientation, let's select parallel to line. And now let's select a reference. Go ahead and select a geometry that will define the direction of the sketch axes. Let's select the line. At any point you can switch your direction from horizontal to vertical by selecting the H and the V directions. You can also reverse either the horizontal or the vertical or actually both. You can also swap as to which way the vertical and horizontal can be placed. When you are finished, select OK. And you are placed directly into that sketch. Notice the difference between the original horizontal and vertical axes as to the one you just created. Let's go ahead and create some shapes to keep this sketch relevant. You cannot create an empty sketch. If you exit a sketch, that contains no geometry, the sketch would not be created within the tree. So with that, let's go ahead and exit. And now any sketch can be converted to either a positioned, sliding, or isolated sketch. To do so, right click over the sketch, go down to the name of the sketch, and here you'll see the edit, which you can then edit the sketch, and you'll see Change Sketch Support. Go ahead and select that, and notice that we have the Sketch Positioning dialog once again. This now opens up, under Planar Support, the ability to switch to a sliding, or isolated, or to be left at Position. Remember that Isolated Sketch breaks all axes links, such as Origin and Orientation, with the three-dimensional position. Only the three-dimensional position is kept, so that the sketch does not move. Also, you can't define the sketch support, origin, and orientation with the isolated option. When finished, select OK, and you'll be brought back out into the 3D mode. Next, let's go ahead and look into getting to create profiles. Let's go ahead, we're going to delete this, and we're going to go to this, and we're going to go ahead and create another sketch.
And next we're going to talk about creating profiles. When creating profiles, you are basically creating continuous lines and arcs. To do so, under your sketch section, you'll find profile. Go ahead and select that icon. Notice that the tools palette, you'll have three options to choose from. Let's go ahead and start with the line, which is already highlighted in orange. This creates linear geometry. It is also the default option within profile. Simply select any area within the graphic window as your first point, and then move your cursor around to create the next point by clicking left mouse button. It will continuously create a line as you can see here. Now if you want to create an arc within this profile, simply left click the mouse button, hold, drag, let go, and notice now I have an arc. If you look up at the tools palette, you'll notice that the tangent arc option is now highlighted in orange. This creates an arc tangent to the last piece of geometry created, as you see here. You can also select again with your left mouse button, and you will then create a line. And notice how in the tools palette that the options switch and how you click the left mouse button. You can also go up and select the option, such as three point arc, and notice now how I'm creating a three point arc. You can left click onto a point and make a coincident, and in doing so, closing the profile will then get you out of the profile tool. So, next, let's go ahead and move to constraints. And we'll talk about geometric and dimensional, but first, let's go ahead and talk about geometric constraints. Now with geometric constraints, we're going to basically constrain these using non-dimensions. So in other words, let's go ahead and select our constraint tool, which is down here at the bottom. And I'm going to select this point here and a point on the other line here. Now notice right away I get a dimension, but we're going to do a geometric constraint where I can have the choice of either selecting within this pop-up menu a coincidence constraint or I can right click and I'll get a menu that will also let me select coincidence. And notice when I select that I get a coincident symbol and I joined these two lines together. Now these are constrained by geometric. Let's go ahead and take a look at some other examples. Now if I want to create tangency between say this line and this arc, I'm going to go ahead and select constraint, select this line, this arc, and I can select the tangency constraint here or I can again right click select tangency. Now notice here again we have this issue, these two points now moved. So what can we do here is do what we did earlier, I'm going to go ahead and select constraint, I'm going to select that point and that point and this time I'm going to use the coincidence constraint off this pop-up menu and notice now they're connected and then there's our constraint symbol and as we see when we make these we can see that we get other issues like for instance this line here isn't straight so what we can do is we can make it vertical by selecting our constraint select the line and we can come within here and select within the pop-up menu vertical constraint. Now we know that it's straight. We can again select our constraint button, select these points, and let's go ahead and make that coincident. We can also do horizontal by selecting the line straight up without even selecting the constraint button. If we select that we can select in the pop-up menu horizontal. Now let's go ahead and try something different. Let's go ahead and select this line here and this one lower and I'm going to select with right click parallelism. And notice now these two lines are parallel. 
and then let's go ahead and select constraint and we're going to select this line to this line instead of putting a 90 degree angle we're going to go ahead and right click and we'll just make that perpendicular now one last one we can do is select circle I'm going to go ahead and put it roughly about here and now what I'm going to do is I'm going to select our constraint tool I'm going to select this arc and the circle and I'm going to right click and I'm going to give it concentricity and now you can see that this circle is perfectly concentric within this arc now next let's go ahead and move into dimensional constraints so let's go ahead let's move over to another sketch and I'm gonna go ahead and select this button here which is normal to view and I'll straighten up my drawing so let's go ahead and go back to our constraint button I'm gonna select that and I'm gonna select this line here and notice now I get a dimension now before I set the dimension I can move the numbers or the dimension itself from side to side wherever I want to place it I can so also at this point change the length of my dimension if I wish to select anywhere else and notice that dimension is then set now if I want to go ahead go back in and move this go ahead and select on it select on the line of the arrow and you can move it up and down if I want to move the dimension itself again and slide it back and forth I can do that as well if you notice that when I hover over the arrow line I get these lines to the outside these arrows on the outside allow me to expand or shrink my dimension now if I want to do a diameter or radius measurement or dimension I go ahead and select on it and at this point if I right click my mouse button I'll be able to change that radius to a diameter and I can change it also back once I'm happy with where I want to place it I can also then at this point change the, the length on that radius if I wish and if I'm happy with what I have go ahead and left click mouse button in an open area twice and I have my dimension now let's go ahead and look at doing an angle I can also select this line to this line and I can get an angle on this as well and at this point again when I select on it I can change that to an angle I want now let's go ahead and take that same line and I'm going to select on it and select the constraint and notice I'll get the length of that dimension if I right click I can also change that to a horizontal and if I right click again I can get a vertical dimension as well and then at this point when I select on it with my left mouse button I can change the length there as well now this basically closes out our beginner sketch in 3d experience uh, webinar session now everything I talked about is in much more depth within our courses we have courses that are from beginners and all the way to advanced what I talked today about was very much the beginner and introduction into essentials and basics of sketching for 3d experience so I highly recommend you to go through and take a look at all of our courses and other CAD softwares that we do have for online training as well um, for any questions you can contact me at eric.banson at tatatechnologies.com and again for more information please visit our website at myigetit.com and thank you again for attending